CBS Atlanta News presents Public Affairs on Peach. You know, it's a topic you hear us talk about all the time. We're talking about childhood obesity. However, the obesity epidemic affects adults as well. There is something you can do about it starting today. Good Sunday morning to everyone. I'm Brandon Rudat. You know, over the past 20 years, there's been a dramatic increase in obesity rates here in the United States. More people are overweight here in the South than anywhere else in the country. In Georgia alone, more than 29% of the population is estimated to be obese, and that can lead to problems with your heart, diabetes, and other major health issues. So what can you do about it? Yes, it is easy to join a gym and say, I'm going to go work out. But for most people, that is not enough. Steve Siebold wrote a book. It is called Get Tough or Die Fat. It's a no-nonsense, straightforward, in-your-face look at the differences between how fit and fat people think. It includes 101 differences between fat people and fit people. Steve is with us this morning. Steve, it's good to have you here. Good to see you, Brandon. You have a very straightforward approach here, very unapologetic. Does it work? Well, my goal of, for writing this book was to wake people up, to wake people up that mental toughness is the missing ingredient in the obesity epidemic. If you get mentally tough, you will lose weight and get fit. How do people respond to your book? I've had three death threats after I did the right. Today Show in New York. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've gone all over the world doing this. I've had to have security at the BBC in, in, uh, in Europe. So, and then other people absolutely love it because they realize this is the truth. And there's really, a, there, there's nothing else to do. If you can stick to a diet and an exercise program, you will get fit. And if you can't, you won't. Why do you think it is here in the South more people are obese here than anywhere else in the country? And why do you think America, when you compare us to the rest of the world, we're one of the fattest countries in, in the world? Well, the South and the South, uh, you know, and I, and I live in the Florida in the winter and, and Georgia in the summer, and, and, and we love our food. I mean, there's no question about it. These are some of the great food places in, in, uh, in the country. And in terms of America, I think a lot of it's probably our portion sizes. I mean, you know how it is. You go to Europe, Australia, or even Canada, and the portion sizes are much smaller. So there's things, some things uh, that we have as a society that are working against us, but we can still we can still solve it. I think it's, you know, I've been, ta I've talked to friends about this all the time and you go to some place like the Cheesecake Factory, which I will say I used, I used to work at, okay? But you go to a place called the Cheesecake Factory and their portions are enormous, right? Because there's some sort of mentality with Americans is that we feel like, well, I'm paying 15 bucks, so you better give me a, a ton of food you know, right. for, for something. Because if you go to a fine restaurant, you've traveled Europe, right? You go to a really nice sure. restaurant in France or Italy, you pay a lot of money for dinner, but it's portion control, man. You come out and at first Americans travel overseas. They're like, this is all I'm getting. It's all you need. Absolutely, yeah, and, and, and we can still have the big cheesecake factory or whatever portion sizes, but we have to have the mental toughness to eat half of it and push the rest away. All right, but do, how do you break through to somebody who has gotten themselves to allow themselves to be obese? Because a lot of people, you know, they do have health issues. They may have a thyroid problem, right? There are some. But a lot of people have no excuse into how they got their, their bodies to where they are today. So how do you convince somebody who's allowed themselves to go that far? How do you break them to change their, their life? Well, one, less, as you say, less than 1% of the population who's obese has a medical issue. It's, and it's, right. it's really about our lack of control, our lack of discipline. I agree with you. And that's why I put, I put a picture of a graveyard on the back of this book. And people said, well, you're just being mean. I've heard that all over the world. And it's not, not at all to be mean. It's to wake people up, to shock them, to say you are whistling past the graveyard if you're obese. This is going to kill you. And this is not, this is not a game. This is serious business. And unfortunately, um, you know, most people uh, uh, are offended by these types of things or the billboards that we put up here in Georgia. They're offended by that. But it's probably the wake-up call we need in this country. All right, you know, we talk about addiction a lot on this program as well. Uh, you know, and there is a true addiction and there are even 12-step programs for people who have food addictions. How do you convince them as well to try and change their lifestyle around? Well, I think this food addiction thing has been completely overblown. You could say someone that plays golf all the time, every spare moment, or fishes all the time, that they have a, a fishing addiction or a, or a golf addiction. This you whole, don't think food addiction is anything like drug or alcoholism? No, I don't. No, I don't. And, and, if, and if it is, in any case, it's a tiny, tiny percentage of the population. This is, this is not a pervasive thing in, 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 in any society, for that matter, especially America. And this is, this is really a, an emotional issue that we've got to wake up and solve. We've got to grow up emotionally in this country, get tough and fix this problem, or we're going to die fat. It's easy. You know, I will say, though, I think it's easy for somebody to sit there and say, 
get tough. I'm of, I'm of the same mentality. I'm of the same mentality. No That's excuses. That's why you look the way you do. Right, excuse, and I work out six days a week. I, I train it. for two hours a day. Right. I'm of that mentality. But at the same time, right, at the same time, how is it possible to get rid of obesity? To me, it's impossible. To me, there are always going to be fat people. There are always going to be overweight people. There are always going to be people who struggle with their weight. To me, it's not reality to think that you can get a population to get fit. And that could be just me, but I don't believe it's true. And I believe that sometimes if you, you get so demanding on a person, sometimes they'll just never get it. Oh, sure. It's, it's self-responsibility. And I agree with you, of course. I wish I didn't agree with you, but I don't think we're going to solve this. There's always going to be poor people. There's always going to be drug addicts. There's always going to be all kinds of problems in any society with, you know, with all these people. But at the same time, it's, I think it's self-responsibility. So we're talking right. to each individual saying, you know, take responsibility for your own health. Otherwise, you're, you're going to really suffer the consequences. And that's what's happening. You know, there have been, uh, there's been a lot of talk uh, at places across the country, uh, cities and towns and schools taking action and holding parents really accountable for their children. Um, and uh, some people have said, hey, listen, you can't go into other people's families' homes and take away a child. I think we ran a story on it on our morning show that a child was being taken out for child protective services because the child was becoming obese. Want to get your thoughts on that. Do you think at any role, do you think the government should step in if a child's becoming too obese inside their house? I don't. And, I, and I've debated this all over the world, honestly, because this is not just happening in America, but it's happening in Australia. It's happening in Europe, all over the place. Right. I, I think it's a, it's a really questionable thing. When the government starts walking into people's homes and taking their kids away because the kid is overweight. I think that's a real, that's an overreach of government. I'm afraid we've gone too far with that. But I think educating parents through the school system, I mean, we're right. paying taxes to, to fund the school system, then let's educate the parents, maybe have programs and classes to, to educate them on how to, how to feed their kids, uh, you know, so, the, so, they, so they can be fit. All right, we got to wrap this up. What do you think about fast food? I think it's a real problem. And, I, and I've eaten a lot of it myself. Right. So, you know, I gained 40 pounds years ago. Do you that's like what I, McDonald's did? Making their portion size smaller. Are you I do. buying it or no? Well, I, I, I do, and yes, I'm buying it, but I don't like the fact that the government came in and was telling, is, is basically uh, strong arming a, uh, a private corporation, a very successful American corporation. You don't like what San Francisco did? No, I don't. Uh, and, I, and I did interviews all over California about that when it happened. And, um, and I, no, I think it's an overreach. We've got to do something, but government, of course, is not the answer. Government is the worst answer. They're the most inefficient organization in the country. Yeah, and I'll just have to argue, you know, and I would take the other side to that. I would say that then you're going to have to deal with the fact that people are going to be obese all the time. And when you go around strong arming people trying to demand them to do something, people aren't going to always do it. It's up to the individual, just like right. it's up to you. You go to the gym two hours a day. I work out. I try to stay healthy and everything. We're, it's up to the individual. If, if people want to die fat, it's their right to die fat and, and suffer the consequences. But there, there shouldn't be any big brother telling them what to do. These people are adults. All right, very good. But what about the children who have no say in the matter? Well, that's that's children a, do not a, have a say in the matter. Well, they don't make an, They don't. A six-year-old kid doesn't have the say in the matter. He doesn't got a wallet to go to to go to the grocery store and get a healthy meal. Yeah, he you're doesn't. right. It's a tough issue. I agree with you, Brandon. I really do. It's tough, and I think education is probably the only way to really bridge it. All right, very good. It's good to have you here, Steve. Yeah, Steve thanks for having me. I appreciate it very much. When we come back, we're going to be talking with a personal trainer about how to get started on a weight loss program and the scams out there as well. Plus. Don't think you can do it? Watch this. I had to tell myself, the weight didn't come on overnight. It's not going to come off overnight. Yeah, just an incredible story. Take a look at her now. We're going to be sitting down with one of our very own CBS Atlanta producers who shed 90 pounds in just 10 months, and she did it by working out and getting fit and getting disciplined. The story coming up.